Welcome once again to my vault, fellow fan addicts, Tommy Burns here. Today I want to pay tribute to a good buddy and a friend of all EC fan addicts of many generations, Russ Cochran. Russ Cochran, like Bill Gaines, is one of those larger than life guys. There was a lot more to him than just EC Comics. And I encourage you to look into Russ Cochran's life and all the amazing things he did. There's a lot of info out there online. In fact, on the EC Fanatic Club on Facebook, he was an active member for years. And uh, a lot of what I know about his activities over the years came directly from him interacting on that page. What I want to talk about today is how Russ kept EC Comics alive and in print for decades. More than anyone, probably besides the original EC crew, Russ Cochran kept EC alive. So it all started right here. This Haunt of Fear number 18 fine art cover print was shot from the original art, which was in Russ's collection in 1970 when he made this poster. Now what happened was, Russ was a professor at Drake University, and he used to visit Bill Gaines in New York, and he had initiated that relationship by writing to Bill and telling him that he was the president of EC Fan Attic Club Chapter Number 3, and he said that there wasn't an axe murderer in the bunch among those uh, chapter members, and they'd all grown up to be productive members of society. Bill got a kick out of that. So they formed a, a bond, they formed a friendship, they really got along with each other well, and they had a lot of things in common. Russ begged Bill for an original piece of EC art because he knew that Bill had saved virtually every piece of EC art in a Midtown Manhattan vault. And uh, so Bill asked him which cover he wanted. He said, Weird Science Fantasy number 29 by Frank Frazetta. And Bill laughed and said, that's the only cover I don't own. Anything else? So he loved that old witch by ghastly Graham Ingalls. Haunt of Fear was Russ's personal favorite EC title. And so he got that cover made a poster print of it, and response was good, and he was amazed at how good the art looked at that size, and the original line art, the details you saw that you didn't see in the printed comics. So then he went to Bill and asked story by story if he could cherry pick some to shoot for these EC portfolios. And this is the first one, came out in 1971. Just beautifully reproduced, large scale, some of Russ's personal favorite EC stories, but as you can see, the detail is just astonishing and EC fans hadn't seen anything like this. The response was fantastic. So over the next few years, up until 1977, he went back and he would pick stories out of the EC vault and he would put out these EC portfolios. Well this kind of got him thinking that if these are successful, wouldn't people want to see everything? So EC portfolios 1 through 6, 1977, he goes to Bill and says I want to re do the entire EC line, but his dream was to do them in a permanent format, something that could be enjoyed indefinitely for decades. So that brings us to the EC library. And what you see here is the complete EC library. This is every volume. The first volume that he did was Weird Science in 1978, followed by Tales from the Crypt, but I just want to show you how beautiful these are. So the slipcase, full color covers on the front and back, Gorgeous slipcases, and then each volume, Smythe's own, archival paper, and everything shot from the original EC art. So, Marie Severin recolored every cover, especially for this series, and you can see that it's just beautiful looking volumes. And he actually ended up doing the complete new trend, complete new direction. He did select pre trend titles. And then finally, the pictofiction volumes. So the whole process spanned about 20 years. Actually, close to 30 years. So starting in 1978 with Weird Science and then ending in 2006 with the pictofiction volumes. So 28 years total, but he actually did it. There's a couple volumes that I want to talk about. Weird Science, there are two printings. The first printing in 1978 had notes by Russ himself. He thought that other people could maybe do a better job, and in 1980, the second printing with detailed annotations came out. Notes by EC scholars like Doug Menville and Mark Avenier and Bob Stewart worked on some of these, and they really, um, Bill Spicer, every volume after Tales from the Crypt, which for some reason they never went back and did additional notes for, 
have great essays and interviews and supplemental material, but as you can see, just a beautiful set. So there are two editions of Weird Science. MAD was published in black and white and color. So it's the only title in the series to also have color volumes. That's because MAD had a lot of crossover appeal um, that, that, you know, these didn't uh, have the mass market appeal that MAD had. And so Russ published those in color. All of these were published in print runs of 5,000. A few of them, the sci-fi titles and the horror titles, specifically went back for additional printings. Those additional printings, according to Russ, were always less than that 5,000. And in the case of, like, Frontline Combat or Two-Fisted Tales, those were never reprinted, so there's only 5,000 sets out there. He estimated that the title with the most volumes was Tales from the Crypt, with between 12 and 15,000 sets printed, ultimately. The Color Mad, there were 10,000 sets printed. There was a black and white version that was also offered to subscribers of the EC library, and that was for people who wanted their sets to all match and all be black and white. So here's an example of the black and white mad. This is the rarest of the EC library sets because he printed 10,000 in color and only 1,000 black and white. So those are a couple things to highlight with the EC library. While he was doing the EC library, he had gotten almost everything printed, but there were a lot of people who wanted more of the material in color, and they didn't want to see it in black and white. So Russ responded with the EC Classics. They're magazine size, and they source the exact same art. You can see the quality is fantastic, but they also utilize Marie Severin's original color separations. So here's an example of what those look like, and there were 12 of these between 1985 and 1989. What happened in 1989? Tales from the Crypt, the TV show, came out. It was a huge success on HBO, and so Russ partnered with Gladstone Publishing, and they did more EC comics. They're 64 pages, so they'd print two issues in one. Bill Gaines hated the way these looked, so the covers and the interiors were terrible. And the reason that mine is in such terrible condition is that <clears throat> my brother and I by this time were already collecting original ECs but we were kind of jazzed that you could get ECs off the newsstand so we were buying these and reading the crap out of them because we looked them as kind of disposable ECs. Well when Bill pulled the contract from Gladstone Russ thought okay I'm going to take it over I'll just publish these myself and he thought now's my chance to do them the way I want to do them in a really large color format. People hated it. So they were hard to preserve, and they were hard for comic shops to display. There was only one of these extra-large EC comics, and then Russ went back to regular comic size. Still 64 pagers, and Russ put out a bunch of these in the early 90s, and they were capitalizing on the Tales from the Crypt TV show success, so the other titles said that they were presented by Tales from the Crypt. There's a little name recognition there. Then, after a few of those 64 pagers, Russ decided he just wanted to do single-issue ECs and reprint the entire line in color. He did. So you've got the EC library all in black and white, and then you've got the complete new trend, new direction, select pre-trends printed in color as single comics. The most recent thing that Russ started was the EC archives. And so he did black and white, he did original color, original comic book color, and then these are digitally colored. And Russ solicited a lot of opinions before starting this series, but he felt like if they had had this color palette available in the 50s, they probably would have used it. And he figured the technology was available, let's do all new digital coloring. Now the reason I pulled this volume out is because... The introduction is written by Russ Cochran. There's a lot of great material from him here. This is Tales from the Crypt Archives, Volume 4. It's my favorite volume of this series because Russ wrote the foreword, but it runs all the way through the book. It's a long story, and it's Russ's whole EC history here. And the other reason this is special to me is that it's signed from Russ. And I miss him, I'll always remember him, and I treasure this book. Over here, we've got... The EC cover portfolio sets. When the Weird Science library set came out, a lot of people asked for the covers. So with the next set that he did, Tales from the Crypt, Russ had the covers overprinted. 
and those overprinted covers were packaged untrimmed. So these EC cover sets are the only place that you will see completely untrimmed cover art. And I call it the Enox toenail situation here because I noticed with these cover sets, you can see Enox toenail down there and it was trimmed off the original cover. So this is the only place you can get the full cover art, unless you own the original art. So when they reprinted the second edition of Weird Science, then you got a Weird Science cover set there. But with the exception of the new directions and the pre-trend uh, pre volumes, he did print cover sets for all the titles. So these came out at the same time as the EC Library slipcase sets. You could also buy cover sets. Now, due to a copyright issue, this one was never distributed. So the rarest of the cover sets is going to be MAD. MAD was never circulated. Russ didn't offer them for sale through his catalogs. There's also a bizarre MAD cover set that I want to talk about quickly. There was a misprint set, and MAD was the only EC Library set to be done one volume at a time. So everything else came out all at the same time. MAD came out one volume at a time. There's a misprint set that went out to subscribers on MAD because, see how that says number seven on the cover? Well, the indicia says number eight. Russ realized that the inside front covers didn't match the front covers. And while he thought a lot of people wouldn't notice that, he couldn't stomach the idea of them being wrong for future generations. So he had these scrapped. He had the cover sets sent out as freebies to people who were patiently waiting for the sets to be completed. And um, that's the kind of guy Russ was. He wanted everything to be perfect. So everything you see here, I consider the EC library to be the definitive EC collection. This to me, I, I can't do any better than this. And these are the books that I want to be buried with in my tomb. I, I don't really, but I love them. So that's it in a nutshell. That's all the stuff Russ put out. If I've forgotten anything, please feel free to mock me mercilessly in the comments. And um, Russ, we miss you. We thank you so much for everything you did to keep EC Comics alive. And thank you for watching me babble about EC Comics. Peace.